Howdy y'all, I'm TJ with Berry Gaming, and these are my top 5 Blood Moon bases for 7 days to die. Each base is designed to allow a player to handle the Day 7 or 7000 Blood Moon. Each one was created to match a playstyle, from explosives, ranged, or melee weapons, to AFK. Each base should last and keep you safe. Warning, results may vary depending on mods installed. And stay tuned to the end for a bonus Blood Moon strategy. First up is the simplest AFK base I have experimented with. I call it the Trader Leech. It's just a small box and a large trench to take advantage of the trader's safe zone. Zombies are not permitted to spawn within the safe zone of the trader, nor damage any trader structure or block within. If you make a trench wide enough and deep enough, they'll simply fall in and never be able to dig out. Three sides need to be five blocks wide by four blocks deep. Your main side should be ten blocks wide and ten blocks deep. This is the side your four block by three block wood box will go. This wood structure will attach to the side of the safe zone. As long as the trench bottom and the bottom of the box are seven blocks separate, then zombies can never reach you, and cop and demo zombies explosions will never affect your base. You must be very careful in building the box, as the structural integrity will be pushed to the limit. The simple box is enough until the vultures show up, and then a turret of some kind will be required. Now you may ask, don't you need to worry about cop or radiated vulture spit? Here's the fun part, you don't. They can't see you, and they don't spit. I have tested this base at max settings and you'll survive. Just don't expect any XP out of the deal. Low risk, no reward. Next is the Stairway to Hell. Another simple design that does require a bit of leveling to acquire the necessary equipment to function. You need access to a generator, engines, wire tool, and the electric fences. You must create a single, double, or even triple wide no-step structure to force the zombies to jump to you. Two exits, one for emergency egress with larger vertical separation to deter zombies, and the other with a hatch to keep the zombies out and allow your attacks. On each side of the path up, you will place an electric fence. This will do two things for you. It will stun lock the zombies to allow a ranged weapon headshot. And it will cause a bit of damage to each shocked zombie. This will weaken them so that at the top, a well-placed melee attack can finish them off or knock them down. This base design is for the player who wants the action and loves massive XP gains. Just be sure to adjust the base size for your Blood Moon strength. Wider for larger numbers, and higher for harder difficulty. fans of rifles and explosives, the Boom Pit funnels zombies into a single block wide tunnel and tricks the undead into falling into a large pit. To get them to fall, use this block, the arrow slit half ramp tip, and offset them a bit low. This makes them think they can make it, but they won't. You make good use of the penetration perk to hit multiple enemies, and once they fall into the pit, stacking pipe bombs to finish them off. There is one weakness to this design. Due to the AI of the zombies, they will tend to hit the support structures of the base more than any other in the video. They'll be ready to rebuild and some defenses to make them think twice. The same goes for the boom pit itself. While causing a lot of zombie damage, the pipe bombs and grenades do damage blocks. This will eventually add up and repairs will be needed, but it's a fun base to use. A lot of players, myself included, tend to take over a building and remodel it to suit our needs. This conversion makes use of strong POIs and a few elements. Select a point of interest with a minimum concrete construction, ideally steel. The POI must have limited roof access and be of sufficient size to give the player time and area to handle the blood moon desired. Use the block step design to slow and guide zombies to the top of the building. Create a small structure off the far edge of the building. Narrow the path on the sides and use this block setup to deflect the zombies off the sides.
a small opening to catch the jumping zombies and drop them through the bottom. If you desire a max difficulty Blood Moon Horde, add some electric fences to the steps to add damage and slow for long range headshots. Turning. It's fast too, I don't know what it is. Is that a bear? It is a bear. Best part of this design is the lower than average resource cost and abundance of POIs to convert. You could even select a trader quest at a suitable POI, convert for Blood Moon, take on the Blood Moon, and in the morning activate the trader quest to reset the POI and repeat. Here is a standalone version. And here is a savage country converted for use. My last base design is the most resource intensive and has a few skill requirements to build. The shock and dart base is essentially an AFK design that can start small and be built bigger to handle varying strengths of the Blood Moon. It requires several electric fences, generators, relays, trigger plates, and dart traps laid out in a specific array. This ensures the electric fences slow and damage zombies, allowing the dart traps to pummel the zombies until defeated. They will eventually make their way through the first section if you set the Blood Moon to max, but I have more ready to go. Two turns will easily handle the vanilla Blood Moon, even at 32 per wave. And three turns and three wide can take on even more. This will require a massive investment in iron, clay, and parts, but with advanced engineering, the costs are a bit lower and you get a lot of experience. If everything is set, it would be an XP-filled AFK Blood Moon. This base requires the most upkeep, and several thousand darts will be required each Blood Moon, as well as electrical parts and forged iron for repairs. If you wanted in on the action, you can add a few hatches to the player box to allow for a bit of shotgun or machine gun action. Bonus time. For all you adrenaline junkies like myself, there's a way to handle the Blood Moon without all that building. A no base Blood Moon is a very real option. With the right perks, weapons, skills, and boosts, it can be very fun. Here's how to prep. Select a melee weapon that has the ability to refill stamina or slow zombies. Ideally, the spear, club, or stun baton. The clubs and spears refill stamina with kills and the stun baton grants stamina for kills and has a stun lock and knockback. At least two ranged weapons. I suggest the shotgun and the machine guns. The shotgun has massive damage output and dismemberment and the machine guns for large magazine capacities and high rates of fire. These will keep the zombies down and the player on the move with the machine guns perk. Light armor with the most mods and best quality you can get your hands on Focus on clothing to increase running speed, like the college jacket. As for perks, invest in your chosen melee weapon's speed perk to increase your speed of blows, the desired melee and ranged weapon's attributes, increasing damage and stamina gains, light armor to decrease stamina drain, run and gun, you don't want to slow down while you're reloading, position, you need meds and may need a lot of them. This also adds a 10% chance for insta-kill with a stun baton maxed out. Pain tolerance to decrease HP loss and lower chances to get stunned. 
Iron Gut boosts last longer, and you lose food and water slower while fighting. And Books, you need Urban Combat 6 to prevent armor from slowing you down while in battle. Boosts, recommend the health bar for more health and a lower chance for critical injury. Skull Crushers, to increase melee damage. Coffee or Blackstrap Coffee for more stamina regen. Mega Crush for stamina regen and 50% faster running. And Moonshine for emergency use only as it blurs your vision. More melee damage, no stun, healing 20 per second, less damage and 60% stamina regen. Just be warned, it does not last long and it's costly to make. Meds, I recommend vitamins before the blood moon to prevent infection. First aid bandages or first aid kits. Painkillers to cure concussion. And plaster casts for those strains and breaks. Don't forget food the highest quality you can get your hands on. With enough ammo and some quick thinking, this is, in my opinion, the funnest way to take on the Blood Moon. Either building, converting, or fighting, these are my best Blood Moon bases. There are many others, but I like to use these. Hope you found these ideas useful or even insightful. I would love your ideas and base designs in the comments. Each one of these bases has been featured in one of my playthroughs. Check the description for the links down below. Be sure to subscribe, and until next time, laters.